grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. My name is Chad Beck, and I'm the associate pastor at Chester United Methodist Church. And whether you are a first-time visitor or a long-time member, I invite you to celebrate with us that God loves each and every one of us. Also, there are many things upcoming that we want to celebrate. First, we will have the opportunity to celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion on Sunday, October the 4th, both in our in-person worship at 11 a.m. and in our virtual worship at 9.45 a.m. That's Sunday, October the 4th. We also celebrate that the youth are currently meeting every Sunday. Our high school students meet at the Annex at 3 o'clock, and our middle school students meet there at the Annex at 4 o'clock. We also celebrate that uh, our children have, the elementary children, have the opportunity to participate in a virtual Sunday school with the help of the parents at home. If you have questions about that, call up here to the church and we'd be happy to tell you more. And we celebrate that in October, on October the 11th, we will have uh, Chester kids, our older elementary students, and they will meet uh, in the afternoons on October the 11th. If you have any questions about that, just call us up here at the church or check out our Facebook page for that. And today, we have a wonderful celebration. We are going to celebrate God's Word. Yes, and we're going to do that by blessing the Bibles that our church is gifting to our third grade students. We're also going to celebrate as we hear our, uh, our lead pastor, Pastor Clara Guestwick, uh, read the scriptures and preach the Word of God to us. And we are also going to celebrate God's love for us through our worship, through our prayers, through our hymns, and through our devotion to God. I hope that you have a blessed time celebrating God's love with us. Thank you. 
friends, it's Miss Lena here and I have a very special message for you today. So I'm in my car and I wanted to tell you what happened to me the other day. So the other day I was driving and this warning light came up on my dash and I wasn't sure what it meant. So when I got to stop, I pulled out my owner's manual <laughs> from my glove box and I was able to look inside and figure out what that light meant so I could fix it. And actually that light meant that my tires didn't have enough air in it. So I was able to go and fix that. I was so glad to have this manual because it gives me advice on what to do when something goes wrong with my car. And the Bible is kind of like an owner's manual. There's so much in here to help us. If you think about it, God, the creator of the universe, the planet, all of us, he is the manufacturer of everything. And he knows the best way to maintain and look after us. And so that's why we have the Bible. In the Bible, it shows us how much he loves us. It teaches us how to love each other. It's good for teaching us and helping us. It's also good for correcting us when we do the wrong thing. And just like my little car manual helped me when something went wrong, the Bible can help us when things go wrong, but it also teaches us how to do things right, the way God intended us for us to do it. Because he is the manufacturer, he is the creator, he knows the best way to live, and we are thankful that he has given us this owner's manual to find out how to do life right. We are so excited today because during worship on Sunday, our third graders will be getting their own owner's manual, and this is going to help them on their faith journey. So let's say a special prayer um, to thank God for the Bible and to thank God for our third graders and to bless them um, as they take this new step in their faith journey. Will you pray with me? One, two, three. Dear God. Thank you for giving us the Bible and for all the ways it helps us learn more about you and how to live for you. We ask a special blessing on our third graders as they use their new Bibles and grow more in love with you and your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, friends, I'll see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Chad, do you remember receiving your first Bible? You know, I can't remember when I received it. You know, I don't remember receiving a Bible either, but I do remember as a child using a Bible that was given to me. It was my Bible, and I was able to read it. It had beautiful pictures in it, and it had the story of God's mm -hmm. Word in it. Hey, do you remember about your Bible? Now, what I do remember is the, that I grew up reading it and taking it every day to Sunday school, every Sunday to Sunday school, and I remember reading it at home. And while I don't remember a gift of an actual Bible, I do remember that the church gave me the gift of God's Word. God's Word is still with us today, isn't it? And today in uh, worship, we are blessing these Bibles, and we are giving them to our third graders. And we're going to challenge our third graders to open the Bible and to start reading uh, the stories that are in here. And really, I think we should challenge everybody. Absolutely. You think so? Yeah. You want to give that challenge for us? Yes. If you don't regularly read your Bible, then I encourage you to start today. And uh, if you do regularly read it, then I encourage you to join one of our studies or buy a study Bible and delve deeply into studying the Word of God and then learning to do it and what it says. Because God's Word is inspired, right? Yes. And when we read that inspired Word, we get inspired to live a godly life. Amen. So that is why we want to give these Bibles today. Chad, let's do a blessing. Let's, let's pray a blessing over these Bibles and these uh, third graders that will receive them. Lord, we give you thanks that you have given us your living word. And this word will inspire us to live a life that is dedicated to you and that uh, mimics your love and your grace and your justice. So, Lord, as our third graders receive these Bibles today, may they be inspired by the words that they read 
so that they too can grow up and live this godly life that you call us to. Lord, your blessings upon these Bibles, your blessing upon the reading, and your blessing upon the children that will be reading them. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. serving after 42 years as a pastor in the Virginia Conference. Now here at Chester, I sing in the Cantata Choir, and also I am chair of the Mission Committee. I invite you to join with me as we pray. So let us pray. Good morning, Lord. What a glorious day it is to be worshiping you this morning. We're so thankful for all the blessings you provide for us. You created us and love us much more than we deserve. Thank you. Lord, we come together to worship you by computer, and that is something that is so different because we know that the fellowship of believers helps us to keep our faith strong and alive. Help us to adjust to this until we can gather again to worship you in person. Lord, there are many problems in our world today. The COVID-19 virus has caused us so many deaths and so many people are afraid that they may catch this virus or that a loved one may die from it. Help us to deal with this fear, remembering that we are in your hands. Lord, the pandemic has caused so many to lose their jobs and to, for those who provide for their families, no longer able to do so. Some are becoming homeless, some are depressed, some are going hungry. May we continue, Lord, to share what you have given us to feed those of those that we can here at CUMC as we reach out through the food bank, through the backpack ministries and other such groups. Lord, the racial tensions, injustice needs to end and help us as your church to do our part to bring this unity between the races. Help us here at CUMC to see every person as your child, regardless of the color of his or her skin. Too many people are racially prejudiced and they don't realize that every person is created in your image. 
Lord, as we listen later this morning to Pastor Clara as she brings your message, help us to have the ears to hear you. Use her as your servant as she feeds us the spiritual food we need. Lord, thank you. Help us to be a blessing to you as you have been a blessing to us. Now let us pray these things in the name of Jesus who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. the scripture 2 Timothy 3 12 through 17 from the Common English Bible. In fact, anyone who wants to live a holy life in Christ Jesus will be harassed, but evil people and swindlers will grow even worse as they deceive others while being deceived themselves. But you must continue with things you have learned and found convincing. You know who taught you. Since childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures that help you to be wise in a way that leads to salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. 
Every scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character, so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. Do you remember the first Bible that you ever received? I want you to think about your childhood. <clears throat> I want you to think about uh, when was that first time that you picked up a Bible or were gifted a Bible. Bibles are so important in life, and so today as we celebrate Bible Sunday in this church at Chester United Methodist, as we give out uh, these Bibles to our third graders, I just want to think and remember and reminisce about the Bible. What is your history with the Bible? How did your family uh, integrate the Bible into your family life? Did they? How are you doing it now with your family? These are all questions that we have uh, that could help motivate us or, or get us to really thinking about how important is God's Word in our lives? Because I can tell you, the Bible, it is a great read. You know, I remember from my childhood growing up that um, every now and then, not always, but every now and then I would see my mother either at her desk or at the kitchen table with a Bible laid out, with some study books um, laid out, uh, with a pen and paper, um, and I could see that she was preparing for a Bible study that she was either teaching or taking because she did both of those. I can remember as a child going over to my grandparents' house and, and those times that I was blessed enough to be able to spend the night with them. The next morning we would get up and Grandmama would make a great breakfast that we would eat at the dining room table. And, but before we were able to eat, with the eggs steaming, with the grits in the bowl, Pop would open up his Bible. And he would usually turn to the Gospel of Luke and read something from there. That was a special memory. I remember the church that I grew up in. Now, this was uh, John Calvin Presbyterian Church in Florence, South Carolina. And every single Sunday, one of the lessons, I believe it was usually the gospel lesson, we as a whole church would pull out our pew Bibles, we would open up the page that Dr. Andrews would tell us to open up to, and in unison, we would read the lesson. That was kind of interesting. I, as a child, I was a little intimidated by that because I'm, I've always been a slow reader, uh, but to have to speak those words out loud with everybody else, especially when the words were biblical names and those are hard to come by anyway. Uh, so it was just an interesting thought. I wonder if Dr. Andrews had us read the Bible out loud in corporate worship because he wondered if we were reading the Bible to ourselves at home. He was gonna get us to do uh, Bible reading one way or another. I remember about my Bible reading that I was scared to death to read the book of Revelation. I didn't read it till I was in seminary. I was that scared of it. That's what uh, my history and my uh, family and my church taught me a fear for that, which is really interesting. Revelation is a beautiful book, and I would recommend uh, reading it, but not, not if that's your first book to read. You know, in my adulthood, I have gotten into the habit of reading through the Bible continually. So I will just pick up the Bible and I will either read it from Genesis to Revelation or sometimes I'll do the uh, focus on New Testament or sometimes I'll focus on the Psalms or the prophets uh, and do read-throughs, but I'm constantly reading the Bible. And the one thing that I have found about that is that every single time I read, even though I've already read those words before, 
I find something new. I am experiencing a new inspiration from God each time I read it. So I know you've already heard today's lesson uh, read to you, but I just want to uh, uh, sort of give you a history of where it is. We're picking up in the middle of a teaching that Paul is giving to Timothy. You see, Paul is encouraging Timothy because Timothy, as a young leader in the church, is starting to get some harassment. He's starting to get some kickback on his uh, teaching methods, on his preaching methods, on his leading the people. And in that kickback, Paul is encouraging Timothy to, to stay the course. You are on a, a holy path, Timothy, and God wants you there because God has called you to be there. So I want us to remember that as we look at Scripture, we really need to look at the context of what we are reading before we pull a verse or two out and look in detail at it. I do want to pull two verses out from today's lesson. It'll be uh, uh, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It's because it's Bible Sunday, and I want us to really look at these two verses Every scripture, Paul says, is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character, so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything good. So every scripture is inspired by God. What does that mean, to be inspired by God? Some translations and some folks who <clears throat> translate the original language, this word inspired could also be translated as God breathed, God's breath. That as God breathed out, this word was inspired. Hmm, that's quite interesting to be breathed upon. As you think of reading scriptures, as you pick up your Bible and as you, you read it, think of it as God breathing upon you. And you know what, that ha what happens when God breathes upon us? We get a life. We get to feel alive. Isn't that what happened in uh, Genesis? That once he created these human beings, he breathed uh, breath into them, and we came to life. To be breathed upon from God is to feel alive. Now, this is a vastly different interpretation or a concept of the Bible being God spoken or dictated by God and someone writing it down. That leads us, if we think of the Bible as dictated by God, as spoken by God, then it, it, it puts us into a place of literal interpretation. And I have trouble sometimes with literal interpretation because like this past week, one of the dishes I had for dinner was a crab dip that my son made. And do you know that Leviticus prohibits us from eating crabs? So if, if I take the Bible literally, then I would not have eaten that crab dip. Or maybe I would have and just asked for forgiveness. I am not sure. Look up Leviticus 11.12 if you want to see that. <clears throat> see, the authority of Scripture comes from this inspiration. It's not from a dictation, but it's from an inspiration because God is a God of inspiration. And it's in this sense of divine wonder that we can look at this Bible and we can read the stories that are here and we can see the movement of the Spirit in the individual's lives. God has breathed upon us as we read. So when you read scripture, how do you feel God's breath upon your life? How do you allow the scriptures to speak to you? When we think about the spiritual disciplines that we have and reading the, 
the scriptures as one of our spiritual disciplines. A lot of our spiritual directors suggest that when we read the Bible, we not only need to read the words there, but we need to let this Bible read us. How do you let the Bible read you? Each morning when I get up, I go downstairs and have my cup of coffee, and uh, sometimes before, sometimes after, I put earbuds in, and I turn on my phone, and I go to this app called Pray As You Go. And in that uh, is some music that I listen to, is some invitation to prayer and to scripture. Scripture is read, uh, usually a scripture is read twice with uh, times for prayer in between. And I have found that, especially these past two weeks, the scriptures have been reading me like crazy and has been opening up prayers for me uh, that I didn't even know I had. I didn't even know these needs were in me until I sat with the scripture and I let it read me and I let it uh, comfort me and I let it challenge me. And then I would pray, Lord, thank you for the comfort. Lord, give me courage in this challenge. Scripture can do that to you if you allow it. The second part of this, every scripture is inspired or breathed by God and is useful for the teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character. I believe all of that. I believe that there is a good guidance in scripture, but I also believe that we have to be careful with this kind of a verse because Too often we take this verse and we use it to our advantage. And we say, you are doing wrong because I'm showing you this mistake through the Bible. Or I am correcting you for living this way or acting this way or eating this kind of food. And the Bible says we should or should not. The Bible then becomes a battering ram, and that is never what the Word of God is meant to be. It is meant to be something that helps us feel alive. I think of it more like what the psalmist says in Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp before my feet and a light for my journey. God's word is like a flashlight that we use at night to to see. It is like a beacon on a hill that lights that pathway for us, that, that allows us a safe journey. That is what God's word is about, helping us know how to to take that journey together so that we can uh, be illuminated along the way. Jesus gives us many parables that help us with that. that he? he takes stories of ordinary day of our lives and he helps us understand how these stories can guide us on our journey. But I think the last part of these two uh, verses is really the ones that I think name this for us. Every scripture is inspired by God and it is useful for teaching and showing mistakes, for correcting and for training character. So that, listen to this, so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. Scripture helps us take our beliefs and our thoughts and our devotion to God and turn it into action that is always surrounded with love and with goodness so that the person who belongs to God 
can be equipped to do everything that is good. You see, Scripture is not meant for us to just sit and enjoy the stories. It isn't just meant for us to, to look at the history of a people struggling in faith, going from places of uh, sin to places of forgiveness and wholeness. It isn't just these stories. It, it isn't just an instruction manual of how we can feel good about ourselves, but it's actually an instruction manual that will equip us to do everything good. How are you letting Scripture guide the goodness in your life? As for Methodists, we have done a lot of good. We use Scripture uh, for our goodness, I think. We use Scripture. We use something called a quadrilateral, if you want to go to the Methodist language. Uh, scripture is our foundation, but as we think about how and what we are to do, we think of Scripture and tradition. We think of reason and experience and all of these things are god inspired and god breathes through these activities and these uh, uh, traditions in our lives so that we can experience god and share god's love and share in god's goodness so today on bible sunday i want to challenge each of you First, let me challenge our third graders who are uh, getting this Bible. We love you, and we want you to be able to read this Bible. And so if you'll look in your Bible, you'll see a lot of little bookmarks or a lot of little notes that are in there from us. Read those too, and, and, and know that we love you from Chester United Methodist Church. I would encourage you third graders to start with one of the Gospels. Matthew might be a good Gospel to start with. And read about Jesus and how he was born and some of the uh, stories that he told and the, the places that he walked and, and the people that he met. Read those stories. Now for the rest of us, I want to challenge us too. Let's read the Bible. Let us take it up daily. And let us not only read the Bible, but allow the Bible to read us. For when we do that, we can walk on this journey in the light of God, knowing that God is guiding and directing and inspiring and breathing on us. <laughs> God go with you, that as you read the word, that as you live your life, you will know the goodness that comes from God. 
Go now in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.